Hi everybody, I'm Kristen Morrison. I am the founder of Six Figure Pet Business Academy and I'm the creator of the Prosperous Pet Business Online Conference. And I am so excited to welcome Chess Edwards here today. He is an optimal living coach. He is a mindfulness teacher. He's a motivational speaker. And he's also a self-proclaimed healthy man. And we need more <laughs> of those out in the world, more healthy people in general. So, um, hi, Chess. I'm, hey, Kristen. I'm just so excited to have you here today. I am too. I'm really, I'm so glad you asked me to do this and oh, be a part of this. Yeah, and so I just want to let everybody know, because some of, some of the viewers know that I lived in Bali mm. um, in 2010 and 2011, and I met Chess um, the second time I was there in 2011, and he was quite vital then, and I can see that he's even more vital now. Um, and so, Chess, why do you eat healthfully? What's the point of that for you? Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned Bali because, you know, those, those are such watershed experiences, mm. you know. And uh, that was an experience for me that really, like you say, it, it, it opened up my vitality even more, mm. gave me more options. And yeah. the way I see it is it's, it's a lifelong journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I've always eaten basically healthy. But, um, you know, when I was a kid, it was frozen burritos in the microwave and frozen pizzas and all and then from there it's progressed all the way along and if you had asked me five years ago do you eat healthy it's like oh yeah but i look at what, how i ate it five years ago mm -hmm. eh, maybe not so much mm -hmm. so where i am now is that the reason i eat healthy is because i i'm i'm in my business as well mm -hmm. you know i i work my coaching business i do corporate client business mm -hmm. and i recognize that when I eat healthfully, mm -hmm. there's about five different things that really happen. And one of the first ones is basically I just feel more vibrant. I have more energy throughout the day. I mean, it's a pretty basic. Yeah. But, you know, there's a great phrase that says it's hard to run your business when you can't even get out of bed in the morning. Isn't that true? <laughs> Unless you want to have your laptop on. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it's in the middle of the day, you yeah. know, if I'm not eating well, yeah. You know, I'm in my early 50s, and yeah. if I'm not eating well, middle of the day, I start to crash. Yep. You know, I start to go down. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's body vitality. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, as you say that, I'm just thinking there are a lot of pet business owners out there who really, they work with dogs. Dogs have a lot of energy, and it's almost right. like, in a way, we have to match that. You know, we have to come with our vital selves to meet, to meet their vital selves and, and to really have that connection. You know? Right. And our businesses are vital. Yep. You know, they're right. vibrant. They're growing. They, they, they got an energy of their, their themselves as yes, well. Yes, they do. If our energy is down, mm -hmm. our business energy is going to be down as well. It's true. Our mojo. You know? that's, ex <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, and the other is, um, so that's the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other is for the mind. Mm -hmm. We feed our brains. Yep. It's just, you know, we're learning more and more about brain chemistry and brain biology. Mm -hmm. So, you know, coconut oils and, you know, different types of, of short chain fat, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that feeds our brain. Yep, it does. So we want to make sure we're a, feeding our brain, not starving our brain, mm -hmm. not overstimulating our brain. Yep. But it's one of our organs that needs to be really healthy because, as you know, starting a new business or running a business... Mm -hmm. Lots of decisions to be made. Yep. Got to be really clear. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not just our intentions. It's the actual physicality. Yep. How clear can we think? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so, you know, I know that you, you said you've made some changes in your life around, yeah. you know, eating pretty healthy most of your adult life, it sounds right. like, but then really ramping it up in the last few years. And so what were some of the changes that you made with that? One of the most recent ones mm -hmm. was um, I, I suffered from candida, which uh -huh. was an internal overgrowth of yeast in uh -huh. the system. Uh -huh. And it's, it typically happens if you do a long course of antibiotics mm -hmm. and then don't rebuild the, the probiotics in the system. Yeah. So I did a two-month cleanse with no sugars, no antibiotics, mm -hmm. no dairy, all natural foods. And one of the things that has shifted since then is I now eat any of the meat products that I eat. Mm -hmm. No antibiotics. Yeah. Sometimes. And I used to, you know, hey, I'm eating chicken or I'm eating lean, mm -hmm. I'm eating turkey. Great, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking at it and recognizing that if they're eating the antibiotics, mm -hmm. I'm eating the antibiotics. That's true. 
And what's the word? Antibiotic. Mm-hmm. And I don't want my biotics to be anti. I mm-hmm. want my, mm-hmm. my biotic system to be really lively. So that's mm-hmm. one of them. Um, a lot more leafy vegetables. Mm-hmm. I'm eating about 60% leafy vegetables now in my diet. And I make my own dressings now. Oh, great. And you know, I used to buy Annie's dressings, and they're great. Yeah. But even those, I look at now when at the store, I'm going, eh, I can't quite eat all that stuff. Yeah. So I make my own, and I get to put in vinegar, you know, right, uh, apple cider vinegar, um, olive oil, lemon, which is great for the alkaline part of the body. Yep. Kelp. Yeah, and I switch it up, and I play. Yes, mm-hmm. I get to play with my food. Dad, That's you know? great. Yeah. yeah, as an adult, you get to play with it. It's fun. Exactly. And um. So what's it like for you to go from, was it, was there a, a change in your body? Did you feel some lethargy when you went from eating, you know, fairly healthy to right. eating even more healthy? Because there is a detox that occurs, I would imagine. I know there has been for right. me. That's a really good point, And people need to be aware of that, especially if you're doing anything kind of radical, like yep. a Clinton's. You know, I recommend folks take small bites yep. in regards to the changes they make. Mm. But when you do something radical, you got to be ready for that. When I did the three-month cleanse, mm. the first week, mm-hmm. I would crash. Yeah. Because what was happening was all the toxins that were in, in my system uh-huh. were getting released. Yep. And I was just, they were being released into my body and I was, I was in toxic shock Mm -hmm. and it took about a week to, to get rid of those. Yeah. Um, the other thing is as I've created a more alkaline environment in my body, Mm -hmm. one of the things that happens is, uh, toxins in our body, they love a more acid environment. Mm -hmm. So if we had, we eat more acid foods, which are what acid foods are uh, a lot, you know, a lot of the dairy uh-huh. is more acid. Um, some of the meat products are more acid. You know, beef is really acid. Lobster yeah. is really acid. Um, the alkalines are more kale, mm-hmm. uh, lemon, mm-hmm. uh, lime, uh, different fruits. P- pomegranate, which you think yes. everyone's talking about pomegranate, yeah. really acidic. Ah, interesting. So I've got a chart that, that we mm-hmm. can share with the group, Great. and that's, you know, alkaline foods and acid. Wonderful. When I create a more acid environment in my body... Um, toxins, I have more toxins in my body. Yeah. And the body's response to toxins is it needs a place to put them. Uh Uh-huh. And where does it put them? Fat cells. Yeah. So the more toxic or acid my body is, the more my body says, man, I got to, I've got to create more fat cells Uh so I can store all these toxins. Yeah. Flush the toxins and the body says, oh, I don't need all these fat cells anymore. And I become more lean as well. Yeah, and vital. I know I've I, I've done a number of cleanses. In fact, in Bali, I did a juice fast for a mm. week, and that was incredibly powerful for me. But I definitely felt this level of sluggishness as I was doing it. Yeah. Um, but then more recently, I, I've done three two-week cleanses in the last year um, at a retreat center. So I actually go away and do it. And so for the first few days now because I've done a number of cleanses it's easier on my body it's yeah. you know I, I I recover more quickly and I feel more vital more quickly which is wonderful well my guess is as well between the cleanses you're mm-hmm. probably always altering and paying more attention to your yep. healthy eating mm-hmm. so that now when you go in for a cleanse you're you're, you're going in less polluted <laughs> yeah it's true it's, it's true I know each one it feels like sloughs right. off. Right. You know, one of the other things I find about this, and it's one of the reasons I eat healthy as well, is I find that it's almost like a, um, it's a, it's a role that I can play in my community. Mm-hmm. When I was doing that two month cleanse, and so yeah. I'd go to people's places, for, houses for dinner, and unfortunately I can't eat this, but I can't eat that. Mm-hmm. My entire community started to form a new consciousness themselves mm-hmm. around what they were eating, how much alcohol they were drinking, how much they were hydrating their body, how much sleep they were getting. Yeah. So I find that when we do that ourselves, mm-hmm. our communities, our clients, yep. you know, they all see that and we become a, a leader in that regard. Mm-hmm. And I think my clients trust me more yep. when they see that I'm loving myself and taking mm-hmm. care of my, and that I care about myself enough to eat well. Yep. There's a sense of like, okay, there's an integrity here that they can yeah. trust. So I think it's really good for people building new businesses yeah. to to recognize that their clients are going to see that. I agree. There's a congruency that happens. And I love that you said that, Chess, because I noticed 
each time I've done a cleanse, I've let my clients know, my coaching clients know that I'm going to be gone for a couple of weeks doing a cleanse. And, mm. you know, a lot of them know that I do this, but if they don't, they'll say, tell me more. I want to know more. And sometimes yeah. they'll even do a cleanse while I'm gone. <laughs> I'll get inspired. Right. And I think we all impact each other in how we're living our lives and what we're bringing to the table. And, and it's, it's so great to be a role model for others just through our example. Exactly. And then a bit of a guide, because most people don't want to feel lethargic. No. Most people want no. to feel vibrant. Yeah. But they're, they don't know. They don't know what's the path. Like, give me some tools that I can, you know, start to use to start to increase my, my healthful lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm thinking about, you have talked about eliminating things out of your diet. And yeah. what were some of the biggest things that you you took out of your diet that really led to the most vitality for you? The biggest one, I don't think this would be any surprise. Yeah. Sugar. Uh-huh. Just, you know, and I wasn't a huge, you know, sugar fanatic. Yeah. But certainly when I had the, the candida, which is yeast, it loves sugar. Yeah. It's like, feed me sugar. Yeah. Um, so that, that cut my cravings. Mm -hmm. But uh, even after, and I've cleaned up the candida completely, mm -hmm. but even after that, I am much more aware of not feeding myself sugar. Mm -hmm. And I feel more vibrant. I feel more vital. I feel more clear headed yep. as well. So we've been told as well, uh, don't eat fats. Mm -hmm. Fats are fantastic. That's what the brain feeds on. Mm -hmm. So cut out the sugars, increase the healthy fats like grass fed butters, ghee, mm -hmm. coconut oil. And that's a really nice balance. But sugar is probably the biggest one I've cut out and alcohol. Uh -huh. Um, I'm much more selective now in regards to how often I drink alcohol, how much I drink alcohol. Um, it's got a lot of sugar in it as well. It does. It's true. Yeah. 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 And I, I know there are a lot of organic wines and beers out there. So, you know, at Whole Foods, they have that. So I've been gravitating toward those if I do imbibe a little bit. Right. Um, and also with the sugars, I'm thinking one change that I made in my own life was I've been eating coconut sugar instead of regular sugar. Actually, I barely ate regular sugar, but I was eating agave syrup, using that in my tea. And, and I noticed this kind of dip in energy. But with the coconut sugar, it's a, I guess it's a low glycemic. That's exactly uh, right. It's low on the glycemic index. And so it it just, I feel like, helps me feel more vital when I'm drinking my tea. I do drink Yay. caffeinated tea in the morning. I love it. But, uh, and I'm not ready to give it up, but right. I think having the coconut sugar helps me feel a little bit better about it. Well, you, you bring up a point, good point. You know, we don't want to give up everything. Yeah. You know, and so that, that what I mentioned earlier, small bites, mm -hmm. you know, as you go through, you choose something that, that you think you can wrap your head around and wrap your lifestyle around and try it for a week or two until it becomes embedded as a habit. Mm -hmm. And then add something else. I like that. You know, I've, I've talked to way too many people who just go whole hog. They've never done a cleanse before. They jump into a major cleanse. Yeah. And five days later, they're going, you know, the heck with this. <laughs> I, I can't do this. Yeah. So one of the things that I recommend right off the bat is every morning, you know, I, I, when I'm sleeping, you know, I try to get seven, eight hours of sleep a night. Uh-huh. I'm dehydrating all night long because mm -hmm. I'm respiring and moisture is leaving all night long. And what do a lot of people do? The first thing they do, they get up in the morning, they have a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a diuretic. Yep. It hydrates them even more, puts the body into even more shock. Mm -hmm. So when I get up in the morning before my eyes are even fully open, I stumble into the kitchen, glass of water, half a lemon squeezed into it. Mm -hmm. uh, that alone is fantastic. Creates wow. a really alkaline environment. Great. I now add just about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar uh -huh. as well. It brings up my HGL, my hydrochloric acid in the body for digestion. Uh -huh. And I add a, a teaspoon of, uh, of collagen, oh. the stuff called Great Lakes um, uh, gelatin, uh -huh. sold on Amazon. Okay. And it dissolves completely, tasteless, dissolves oh. completely in water. I drink a, a full glass of water first thing in the morning, mm -hmm. and I can feel my body just go... Mm. Oh, okay. We can start the day now. Yeah, that's great. You're inspiring me. I'm going to have a drink of water. Maybe everyone who's watching can <laughs> cheers. So water, um, 32 ounces for every 50 pounds of body weight. Oh, 
throughout the day. Yeah. So that's a fair amount of water. Yeah. So one of the big recommendations is have some water bottles around the office, around the home, mm-hmm. carry one in the car. Yeah. They always get filled up and drank. Yeah. And, and I love that you're drinking out of a glass bottle because, yeah. you know, the plastic kind of, it leaches a lot of the plastic. Yeah leeches if it's in the hot sun so good point this yeah. is a little tequila bottle it's, oh it's a tequila bottle <laughs> yeah it's like this that. really cool tequila it's that i got beautiful. one time and, i so, love yeah. it so, and this goes along with the idea when i drink out of this it feels like i'm treating myself well uh-huh. and that's the other part of it is why we eat healthfully because we love ourselves from the inside out yeah what can we do to honor ourselves? You know, if I wake up and I'm just having a stressful day or mm-hmm. I don't feel good in the morning, I can at least say, you know what? How can I honor myself today? Oh, that's you know, beautiful. I can eat a little bit more healthfully. Mm-hmm. And if that's the only thing I do, mm-hmm. good. That, that makes a difference. Oh, well, thank yeah. you so much, Jess. So I know you're going to be creating a kale salad now. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and let you create that, and then we'll come back and, and talk about the kale salad. And Okay. Yeah. Okay, oh, great. I can't. It's my favorite salad. Oh, I it know. I, I love it, yeah. too. I'm really excited that you're going to make it. Beautiful. Okay, okay so I'll see you in a minute in the kitchen. Sounds great. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my kitchen. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make one of probably the healthiest salads I know how to make. And what's beautiful about this salad is it's not only healthy, but it is easy to make, as you will see, and it's also incredibly delicious. I don't think I've ever made this salad for anybody who didn't absolutely fall in love with it and want the recipe right away. So I'm going to give you the recipe. In fact, I'm going to a potluck tonight, a gathering, and I'm going to be bringing this salad. So uh, I'm going to show you how to make it, and it's going to get eaten by good people tonight. All right, so this is a raw kale salad. And a lot of people hear kale and they think, you know, they may have had kind of either a bad experience with kale or they're not really familiar with it. Kale can have a reputation or a reputation of being um, a little bit bitter and kind of tough, especially raw. Cooked kale is fantastic, but raw, a little bit tough and chewy. So I'm going to teach you how to make a salad that makes it incredibly appetizing. So here's the kale that we're working with. This is kale right here. And you want to buy kale that's nice and stiff. You don't want it all kind of limp and and soggy. Good stiff kale. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the outside of the kale from this stem. There's a stem right here. That's the bitter part. So if you buy kale at the store, get it in the whole leaf form. If you buy bagged kale, it is typically chopped kale, and they chop the stem into the mix. And that's where a lot of the bitterness and toughness comes from. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to separate this out, kind of separate. See, I'm peeling the leaves here, peeling them off of the stem. It leaves the stem there, and that's what we're not going to use. And we're going to use this kale here. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel a a variety of leaves here. Very easy to do. Again, I end up with a stem right there that we're going to throw away. This is all washed. I pre-washed it before making this salad. So now we've got a bunch of kind of leafy kale. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this kale and we're going to bunch it up into a nice little ball, just like that. A nice little ball of kale. And we're going to take that and with a nice sharp knife, we're going to cut that kale into small bite-sized pieces and add that into our salad. Now, here's one of the beautiful things about kale. As you heard me talking about earlier with, with Kristen, kale is remarkably alkaline. It's one of the more alkaline vegetables out there. We want to build a really good alkaline uh, system within us because it's hard for toxins to live in an alkaline system and for disease and cancers to live inside of an alkaline system. So we want to go alkaline and kale will do the job. Another thing I love about this salad is it just feels so good to eat. As we were talking about earlier, we need our energy. We need to kind of love ourselves from the inside out. And whenever I make this for myself, especially if I choose this over a less healthy meal, 
there's some aspect of me that feels honored, feels respected, and really feels more robust and alive, and I can do my work better, I can show up in my work better. So I pre-cut some kale earlier. This is our kale right here in, in a bowl. Now it's pretty full. When we do this next process, it's going to kind of diminish down a bit. So here's the next process. We're going to take a bit of olive oil, a nice good quality olive oil, and we're going to drizzle some of that on the salad. We don't want to drown it. We just want to put enough to kind of coat the leaves. People will ask how much olive oil, and I'm about to put salt, they'll ask how much salt, and the truth is, I don't know. I don't really cook that way. The reason that I don't like to cook with amounts is I want to feel close to my food. I want to build a relationship with it. So I want to just be able to feel into how much olive oil is needed and how much salt is needed. And if I put a little bit too much, then I learn and I do it different next time. All right, next ingredient. First ingredient was olive oil. Now, Himalayan pink salt or any good quality coarse salt. And I see salt, but you want it to be coarse. You don't want to use table salt or any of the iodized salts that are really fine grained. A nice coarse grained salt. And you're going to put, <laughs> you're not going to have the top fall off of that. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. If you didn't see what happened there a moment ago, I had my, my salt and I was talking about using a coarse salt and I went to, to grind it and the whole top came off and that was a bit more coarse than I wanted. So, we got the olive oil on there. Now we're going to take a nice good raw salt and sprinkle that or grind that on top of the salad. Now, the next step we're going to do is we are going to m use our hand and this is kind of the fun part here. We're going to use our hand and we're going to get in there and we're going to massage. We're going to take it and just massage that salad. And what it's doing is it's driving the oil and the salt into the cellular uh, makeup of the leaves and it's breaking down the, the bitterness and the toughness of the kale. And so this kale is now getting nice and soft. You don't want to over massage it. You just want to get a good coating of all the olive oil and the salt in through the leaves. Use a, perhaps a little bit less salt than you think you might. You can always add salt later. Now I'm just going to give that a general massage. Wash my hand again here. Now, next is avocado. What we're going to do is we're going to take an avocado and we're going to slice our avocado right down the middle like that. We're going to open it up. We've got a beautiful avocado there. We're going to take out the seed. It's a wonderful way to take out the seed. We're going to score the avocado. So we're going to take the avocado and score it into nice sections right here. And the other as well. That way you don't have to peel your avocados. We're going to take that avocado now and we're simply going to remove the outside shell, take all those nice chunks and drop them into the salad. I'm using my thumb there to push out all the avocados. Now here's something really important to remember. If you're making this salad, well anytime you're making it, but especially if you're making the salad for friends, and you're over at their house or they're at your house and you're making for them, wash your hands before you make the salad. It freaks people out. If you're in here kind of mashing away and massaging the salad without washing your hands first. So what we're doing now is we are taking that avocado that we just put in there and we're doing one last massage. And what that's doing is it's coating all the kale leaves with a nice fine coating of avocado. Again, you don't want to overdo it and over soften the kale, but just enough to get a nice coating on all the leaves. All right, now your hands are going to be a bit of a mess right here, and that's kind of the fun part. We get like playing in the mud when we're kids. We have permission to play with our food as adults. So I'm going to wash my hands. I don't have to get my hands back into the salad anymore. That's pretty much it. So I've got the kale, I've got the olive oil, I've got the salt, and I've got the avocado. Now we're going to add our ingredients, and you can really play here, but the ingredients that we're going to add today are, first of all, scallions. All right, These are spring onions or scallions, and we're going to chop off the tips of those guys. 
peel off any of the dead skin until you end up with just really nice, nice, clean scallions. Chop those guys up. Now you can also add, or in place of the scallions, you can do garlic if you'd like. Garlic is a fantastic replacement. If you really want to do a super, super, super healthy uh, blood cleansing salad, garlic might be the way to go. So we're going to put in our scallions. Beautiful. Now, the next is cucumber. All right, a beautiful cucumber. This is a cucumber out of my garden. Chop off the ends. Probably going to use about half, three quarters of this cucumber. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it down the middle, turn it over, slice it down the middle again. That gives me nice four wedges. Put all four of those wedges together and chop those into small chunks. That gets added to the salad. Now, tomatoes. Now this is summertime I'm making this salad, so I got all this beautiful stuff growing in the, in the uh, garden. But you want some good organic tomatoes. And what we're going to do with these guys is we're going to chop them in half and then take each of those halves and chop that in half. So we got four quarters right now. And then take those quarters and chop those into chunks. Now again, a good sharp knife. A dull knife is one of the most dangerous things you can have in the kitchen. So why are we doing all this? We're doing all this so that we feed ourselves well, so that we love ourselves, so we give ourselves a nice treat. And it's got a very few ingredients, so it's real easy to make. So there we go. We've got tomatoes, cucumbers, and scallions on top of the kale, and that's it. All we have to do now is take that, mix that in, and it's a beautiful colorful salad as well. It gives a lot of the reds, nice different, the light colored green from the cucumbers. So here's the final thing, and that is lemon. If you ever make this salad and you find that when you make it you think, God, it just doesn't taste as good as the last time I made it, it's probably because you forgot lemon. This is, you absolutely need lemon. So what we're going to do, take a beautiful lemon here. You can use a lemon squeezer if you want to squeeze it. You can use a, a strainer to squeeze it through. I like to use my fingers. I like to let it squeeze right through my fingers. Use my fingers as the strainer to strain out all the seeds. And this is a fairly big salad because I'm making it for a bunch of people tonight. So we're going to go ahead and use an entire lemon. Again, start off with less. If you need to, you can always add more when all is said and done. If you're not going to serve this salad for a while, if it's going to be hours and hours and hours before you serve it, put the lemon on last. Wait until you're just about to serve it, put the lemon on it, and give it a final toss. So there's my lemon. And that's it. That is the raw kale salad. You can add other things if you want. You can add feta cheese is fantastic. You can add roasted sunflower seeds. I'm going to put on some pumpkin seeds right before I go tonight. I don't want to put them on now because it will get soggy. So right before I serve it tonight, I'm going to sprinkle on some uh, raw uh, pumpkin seeds. Pumpkin seeds are also extremely alkaline. So I've got a, lemon is extremely alkaline as well. So I've got a salad right here that's going to feed me in a really nutritious way. It's incredibly delicious and it's going to get me a lot of love from a lot of good people I love as well because it is so good. All right, enjoy. Eat healthy and love yourself from the inside out. Take care. See you in just a bit. Hey there. Hey, I love that salad. <laughs> it's so good. Isn't that phenomenal? It is. And I think what's most surprising to me about that salad is the lemon juice that you squeeze in there. Yeah. 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 And also the massaging with the avocado. It makes it fun. Yeah, <laughs> it makes it, it fun to get my hands all messy. And... I know, I know, I know. I'm glad that you 
that you tell us to really make sure to wash your hands, especially if you're going to be preparing it in front of others so they don't freak yeah. out. <laughs> I learned the hard way. Yeah, I bet you did. I was at a friend's house, and I'm like, let me make you a salad. And I'm making, and she's looking at me like, oh, man. And she and she asked me, she said, did you wash your hands? And I and I thought I could lie. You know, like, sure I did. Like, uh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh <laughs> yeah, so really good to do that as a visible yeah. experience for people so they can really see. I'm washing my hands now, and then I'm going to be playing with the food right. before I prepare. <laughs> Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Chess. This has been incredibly informative and fun. And um, why don't you let the viewers know how they can get a hold of you if they want sure. to contact you? Beautiful. Um, so my website is www.chessedwards.com. And, uh, and my work really is on, on helping people live powerful and joyful lives. And it's really through what we're talking about. It's yeah. the balance, the strengthen, and the integrate the mind, body, and spirit. Uh, for healthy and joyful living. So that's the best way to get a hold of me. Great. Um, if they do a Facebook search for uh -huh. me, okay. as well, just Chess Edwards, Great. then that's definitely a way to get a hold of me as well. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much, Chess. Yeah.